Hello and welcome everybody from uh, Aruba, from the Caribbean. Uh, this vlog will be really amazing because uh, we will uh, take a walk and visit all sightseeing locations of this uh, beautiful and uh, exotic uh, island. Um, actually, it uh, can be visited uh, all over the year because uh, the weather is uh, always very nice. And uh, beside of that, the uh, island of Aruba is uh, not in the hurricane belt uh, zone so uh, other uh, Caribbean islands are affected uh, by this uh, hurricane zone this means uh, that uh, in the hurricane season uh, it's not really good to travel uh, to those islands but uh, Aruba is an exception uh, here you can travel all over the year so actually this uh, hurricane uh, season is from uh, the beginning of June until the end of uh, November and uh, as I said it's not affecting uh, Aruba the country of Aruba it's uh, just one island and uh, locals uh, call it one happy island for a reason because it's always uh, nice weather and uh, locals are usually very happy they are usually uh, waving uh, for tourists and uh, they are really friendly with uh, the visitors and uh, yes uh, this uh, island of Aruba became uh, an autonomous uh, country in uh, 1986 because uh, actually before that it was part of uh, the Netherlands until the uh, colony of uh, Netherlands so even now uh, even though it uh, has his own uh, parliament and uh, uh, it's really self-organized uh, country uh, it's still part of the uh, kingdom of Netherlands together with uh, Curaçao uh, and uh, St. Martin and of course the uh, Netherlands so these four countries form uh, the Kingdom of uh, Netherlands uh, Aruba together with uh, Bonaire and Curaçao also uh, called uh, the ABC uh, islands they are uh, not far from each other so if you have uh, more time more vacation you can visit uh, all of them together well I will not have time uh, for that but uh, I will just stay in Aruba and I promise you that it will be a really amazing uh, vlog so uh, it will be worth to watch uh, all uh, the long uh, uh, video travel film about uh, this uh, amazing uh, island Aruba is part of uh, the South American uh, uh, continent because uh, actually it's uh, lying only 29 uh, kilometers uh, far from the Venezuelan coast um, and uh, well, uh, it's just like uh, 15 minutes uh, by boat, but uh, currently it's not that easy to travel uh, uh, from Venezuela to Aruba because of the pandemic situation. Venezuelan citizens are not allowed to enter Aruba and also from Aruba to Venezuela it's uh, not, uh, not that easy to uh, travel to the, main, uh, to the mainland. But uh, it's uh, very, very close. The, the country of Aruba is also not uh, very big. It's uh, 32 uh, kilometers uh, long and uh, only 10 kilometers uh, wide so actually you can uh, cycle through uh, this uh, uh, island or uh, rent a car this is what usually tourists uh, do when they come here they rent a car and uh, uh, um, this is how they visit all sightseeing uh, uh, locations Aruba has like uh, 116,000 uh, inhabitants and currently I am in uh, Oranjestad this is the capital city of uh, Aruba and uh, this has like uh, 26,000 uh, uh, inhabitants Aruba has a dry uh, climate and an arid uh, cactus thrown uh, landscape this is also, also uh, uh, one thing uh, which makes uh, the island uh, very special it's not like the other uh, Caribbean islands because the island is part of uh, the Kingdom of Netherlands uh, you might ask the question if uh, Aruba is part of the European Union well uh, it is not it would be very funny that uh, it's like 8,000 uh, kilometers far from the mainland of uh, Europe and it would be part of the European Union well it's not but uh, it's very interesting that uh, everybody who is uh, born in Aruba the Arubans uh, get uh, also the Dutch uh, passport, the Dutch uh, citizenship. The island of Aruba was discovered by uh, the famous Amerigo Vespucci who also discovered uh, America and uh, actually America got uh, its name uh, from uh, Amerigo Vespucci. Uh, he came here uh, together with Alonso de Ojeda in uh, 1499 and uh, claimed uh, this island uh, to uh, the Kingdom of uh, Spain and uh, uh, they described the island uh, as the island of the giants because the Kakatiyo Indians were really tall. These Kakatiyo Indians uh, migrated uh, to the island uh, more hundred uh, years uh, uh, ago before uh, Vespucci arrived. And uh, well, uh, Vespucci and Ojeda returned to Spain uh, with a large uh, uh, stock of uh, cotton and uh, Brazil wood. 
and uh, uh, the first governor of the island uh, was uh, Alonso de Ojeda who returned uh, to Aruba from Spain and uh, yeah of course as I said uh, it's uh, it claimed uh, uh, for Spain so uh, Aruba became uh, under the uh, surveillance of uh, Spain and uh, as uh, it was uh, like uh, every time uh, on these uh, islands uh, which were uh, so uh, occupied by uh, European uh, forces uh, they forced poor uh, Kakatiyo Indians to labor camps and uh, they needed to uh, uh, work in the mines of uh, Hispaniola another uh, island uh, it was uh, really sad that uh, they uh, did this but uh, as, as I said as, uh, unfortunately uh, it happened uh, every time with the local people after uh, the colonization in 1636, uh, Netherlands uh, seized uh, Aruba from the Spain. Uh, this happened during the Thirty Years' uh, War. And uh, it was very interesting that the Dutch was not uh, widely spoken on the island. Only, uh, it was spoken only in the colonial administration. And uh, locals uh, were studying in Spanish until the end of the 18th uh, century. Dutch was then uh, spread uh, only later in the 19th uh, 20th century more hundred years ago after uh, the Dutch uh, conquered uh, this uh, island. During the Napoleonic Wars uh, the British Empire took over uh, the island and uh, they ruled it uh, between uh, 1806 and 1816 until uh, the Anglo-Dutch uh, treaty uh, was made and uh, after this uh, treaty they actually made uh, peace and uh, uh, the British Empire gave uh, this island of Aruba back uh, to, uh, to the Dutch. During the Second World War uh, the Nazi Germany occupied the uh, uh, Netherlands and uh, the Dutch government moved to London uh, in exile so uh, uh, of course uh, they were helping uh, the ally uh, forces and Aruba had a uh, lot of uh, oil fields so this is the reason why uh, some uh, English uh, oil tankers uh, were uh, here in Aruba. Of course the Germans also uh, spotted uh, this fact and uh, they sent uh, some uh, submarines uh, to this uh, Caribbean region. I was really surprised when I was reading about this because well uh, even here in the Caribbean uh, the World War uh, took place. I didn't know that. Well this is actually why we call it World War because uh, it's everywhere in the world unfortunately. It was a really sad uh, time of the human history. Uh, but what I wanted to say, uh, these uh, German submarines uh, started to bomb uh, these uh, English uh, oil tankers, uh, these uh, ships. There were of course some uh, Dutch uh, guards, uh, some Dutch uh, Fokker uh, airplanes. Uh, they uh, started to fight back and uh, attack these uh, German submarines. And after that uh, they also get some help uh, from the US. And uh, these US airplanes uh, started to bomb uh, the submarines also. So. Uh, this uh, small German army needed to return to uh, Martinique. But uh, even though uh, that uh, this uh, uh, battle was not really decided, so uh, we cannot uh, talk about uh, winning uh, part, the Germans caused uh, heavy damage uh, on these uh, oil fields and this was uh, their intention uh, to do it. After the Second World War in 1947, Aruba created its first uh, constitution for uh, status aparte to become an autonomous uh, country and uh, a notable figure of this action was uh, Henny Eman. Of course Netherlands was not happy about this and uh, they delayed uh, the answer and uh, to do anything. In 1954 then they created the charter of the Kingdom of uh, Netherlands which was actually an instrument uh, to establish the political uh, relationship between uh, Netherlands and uh, uh, its uh, colonies, the Dutch uh, Caribbean. Yeah. So what happened, uh, they formed uh, the Netherlands Antilles, they united uh, all uh, Dutch Caribbean islands into this uh, country, uh, the Netherlands Antilles, and uh, of course uh, they still uh, uh, had the surveillance, so uh, it was uh, not uh, really an autonomy, so local Arubans were not happy about this uh, decision. In fact Aruba achieved uh, its autonomy in the 80s, in 1985 uh, the constitution uh, of Aruba was approved by the Kingdom of uh, Netherlands and in uh, 1986 
uh, the first elections were, held, were held and uh, it was the first time when Aruba had uh, his own uh, prime minister and own uh, par parliament. Of course it was not 100% uh, enough uh, for the Arubans, they wanted uh, to be uh, complete independent and uh, this was uh, planned uh, to be done uh, step by step until uh, uh, 1996. Uh, they said in that year uh, Aruba should become uh, completely independent. Uh, well, uh, this uh, never accomplished because in uh, 1990 the current uh, Prime Minister of, uh, of Aruba joined the conference uh, in uh, Hague in the uh, Netherlands and uh, they delayed uh, this uh, decision until not a determined uh, time and uh, as we can see in, even in 2021 Aruba is still an uh, autonomous state but uh, not independent. So as you can see Arubans really have uh, the national uh, feeling because uh, uh, they were always uh, wanting uh, to have uh, this autonomous uh, state. It's then surprising that only 66% of the population uh, say that uh, they uh, are Arubans and only 4% are uh, Dutch. Uh, so actually this colonial period doesn't have uh, its uh, stamp on the island. Well, uh, from the architectural point of view it is. Uh, you will see uh, these uh, colonial buildings I will show you uh, soon. And 9% uh, are uh, Colombians. The main language uh, and also used uh, in the administration and political area it's uh, Dutch. So uh, that uh, uh, remained uh, as it was uh, before from the colonial times. Uh, but the main uh, language which is spoken on the island is Papiamento. Uh, Papiamento is a very interesting language uh, because uh, it is originated and it is a mix uh, from uh, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, Dutch and uh, some uh, Western African uh, languages. So it's, it's uh, really, really interesting. This is the main language of the island. This luxury ship uh, looks like the Titanic. It's really huge. Here we can already find the masterpiece of the Dutch colonial uh, uh, times. I think it was a palace. Now it is used as a plaza, it's a shopping mall. It's really beautiful. Well, as you know, I always uh, love uh, architecture, so I always uh, take a look uh, when I do sightseeing also on these uh, kind of interesting uh, buildings. Baby Beach. 
can't get tired of these beautiful colors. It's really amazing. It's on the southern part of the island. A little bit uh, tricky to reach it, but it's really worth. The water is very shallow, maybe that's also reason why it is called Baby Beach. A lot of uh, children going inside of the water. It's no chance of uh, drowning. The weather is perfect, it's uh, 26 degrees. Well, even if it doesn't sound so hot, in this region it's really recommended to use some sun cream because otherwise you can get very easy sunburn in the Caribbean. I didn't talk about local dishes until now. Uh, well, there is Aruban uh, speciality, which is uh, iguana soup, <laughs> but uh, currently you cannot find it uh, actually nowhere. I couldn't find it. There are some rural areas where uh, you can still uh, find such a dish. The government uh, protects uh, the iguanas, so this is the reason why it is actually forbidden uh, to hunt uh, them. And uh, there is also an ostrich farm uh, in Aruba. You can uh, actually visit it. Uh, also as a tourist and uh, close to that uh, they uh, also serve uh, ostrich uh, hamburgers where I would be very sad uh, to eat them so that was also not an option but now we will try something interesting it's not a local dish it's a South American speciality more exactly it's um, a Colombian uh, Venezuelan uh, dish it's um, the patacones which is made uh, from Plantain. Plantain is a cooking banana or also known as a green banana and uh, they uh, fry it twice and serve it with some uh, salsa, uh, some sauces, uh, guacamole or with some spicy uh, sauces and uh, yeah, we will try it now. So this is the patacones, uh, here you can see that it is, this is the banana bread uh, and filled together with uh, ham, cheese and I think also egg and some other vegetables. It's uh, very interesting uh, stuff. <laughs> wow, it was really delicious. It was uh, so, so good. I really enjoyed it. It was the first time that I ate such a thing. Actually, um, when I came here, I googled uh, how they make uh, this uh, stuff because uh, I was reading a lot of uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez uh, novels and uh, this uh, famous writer um, actually has a lot of uh, writings and uh, novels uh, from this uh, uh, territory of the Caribbean so I already read about it that uh, they make uh, from uh, this uh, cooking banana some kind of uh, foods so yeah how should I describe the taste it's like uh, sweet and sour uh, well this is uh, my opinion but it's um, it's really uh, joyful because uh, it has so much uh, things in it so this is uh, what it makes it very special
interesting that uh, locals are greeting each other on the street like in my small hometown uh, in a village well uh, this uh, habit it's uh, not really known uh, in the European cities uh, that uh, people are just greeting each other on the street and uh, they also greeting the tourists so actually I learned uh, in Papiamento how to say uh, uh, hello like uh, <laughs> have a good day uh, in Spanish it's uh, buenos dias uh, but uh, as I said Papiamento is a mix of uh, Spanish Portuguese uh, Dutch and uh, some Western African languages so it is actually uh, bom dia this is uh, how locals are greeting each other during the day and I also was uh, I was also greeting them and they were very happy that uh, a tourist uh, learned uh, such a thing and uh, yeah, I think uh, this is more closer to uh, Portuguese, uh, Bom Dia. Another beautiful uh, building from the Dutch colonial times is the Dr. Eloy Arendt's house. If you are visiting Aruba and Oranjestad, you shouldn't miss uh, this tourist attraction. It's a real pearl of the colonial architecture. Unfortunately, we cannot go inside uh, because it's one of the buildings of the local council what we can admire is from uh, from the outside it was built in 1922 This is the Aruban flag on the right side and on the left side you can see the flag of the Netherlands. port of Oranjestad it's really huge ships are docking here I will tell you the story how I got uh, from the airport to the city, to Oranjestad, uh, to my accommodation. It was uh, really funny. Uh, actually, I googled already before my flight that uh, there are taxis and it's uh, $20 uh, for a ride. And also uh, my hotel contacted me through an email that uh, they offer me uh, a shuttle or something like that for $20. And I told them that I don't need it because uh, there's public transportation, a bus uh, for uh, $2. But when I got off uh, from the um, from the airplane and got out uh, got out uh, from the uh, terminal of arrivals, I saw that uh, there is a, there is no uh, bus uh, stop. Actually, there were some buses uh, waiting for tourists. Uh, they were the buses of the hotels, but uh, I didn't saw any stop of the public transportation. But I guess there are um, somebody who are working for the airport and. Uh, uh, he showed me. Actually, locals are really, really friendly and uh, they are waving on the streets and uh, they are sending likes. I don't know what this means, but uh, they are very friendly with the tourists and uh, also very kind and always smiling. So, yeah, it's really a happy island. So, I need to cross uh, like uh, uh, two highways like this. <laughs> and uh, on the other side, it was the, the bus uh, station. It was just a bench and uh, one sign that uh, this is the bus uh, uh, station, nothing more than that. And I also didn't saw on the map uh, that there is a bus stop. But anyway, it was, uh, it was okay. Um, well, actually it was uh, kind of dark <laughs> and I was waiting alone. So you can imagine uh, we were landing by a Boeing uh, 777 
a lot of tourists uh, coming from Europe and nobody came to that uh, bus station, only me. <laughs> and uh, I found a little bit uh, yeah, scary and strange that uh, nobody was there. And uh, what happened after? Uh, a local guy came and uh, then I was uh, expecting, okay, the bus uh, should come uh, now. And actually a mini bus, a uh, mini van uh, stopped uh, in front of us. And uh, there were two uh, like Jamaican looking like uh, uh, guys with uh, long rasta hairs. <laughs> they were the drivers. <laughs> and I was looking, okay, no, I'm at the Caribbean uh, for sure. And also Caribbean uh, background music uh, <laughs> was playing. And I paid for $2 uh, this, uh, this ride. Well, it, it was a little bit funny for me. Uh, like a first uh, cultural uh, meet with uh, local people uh, but uh, it was really safe so actually Aruba is a very safe uh, country and well um, the consulate of the UK and the other uh, websites of other consulates advise to be cautious uh, not to walk um, in the night at the beach and um, well um, take care of your belongings and uh, stuff like that but it's uh, nothing more uh, that you should pay attention, uh, so it's um, it's uh, really uh, safe. This oval shaped uh, beach is the Druif uh, beach. It's very close to uh, Oranjestad, so you can just uh, walk uh, from Oranjestad to this beach. And it's usually not crowded, so that's why I advise uh, uh, this beach. And also if you are uh, a budget traveler like me and uh, you don't want to stay in the hotel area that is a part of Aruba where there are a lot of luxury hotels and actually there is uh, no reason to do that because uh, in my opinion it's enough to have a clean uh, flat uh, clean apartment uh, with uh, some good bed where you can uh, sleep so uh, that's, that's enough for me and um, well, uh, in Oranjestad you can find apartments like that, which are very cheap, uh, it's fitting for a budget traveler uh, like me. And I booked uh, there and uh, I can just walk uh, to this beach. And, and that resort area there are a lot of uh, five-star hotels and uh, usually a lot of uh, rich Americans are going there. Well, if you, um, if you like it and you can love to yourself, uh, of course it's more luxury. And uh, they have all-inclusive uh, stuff, but uh, well... Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, if you are a budget traveler and uh, you are searching for Aruba, the first uh, search results on Google will be some uh, very uh, fancy and some very expensive uh, hotels and uh, everything and uh, it might scare you off. But if you watch my vlog and take my travel advices, then it's completely fine uh, uh, to travel to Aruba because you can also do it as a budget traveler. This is still the Drift Beach. It is very long. already the hotel area which I mentioned with the very fancy hotels and uh, all-inclusive accommodations
The local currency is Aruban Florin, which is uh, very funny for me because uh, I am living in Romania and uh, Florin is a Romanian male name. I also had a colleague uh, who was named Florin. <laughs> Actually, uh, you can also pay everywhere by uh, US dollars. And uh, well, uh, if you want to withdraw cash from the ATM, it costs a little bit. Uh, they have some commission. Arubank uh, has a six dollars uh, commission, and uh, the bank, the Caribbean uh, bank, uh, has uh, ten dollars. So I think uh, it's not a good idea to uh, yeah fill the pockets of these uh, banks. So it's better to bring some cash with you if you are traveling to uh, Aruba. So as we walk on western coast uh, of uh, Aruba from uh, south to the north after Druif uh, beach we can find the Manchebo beach this is also very beautiful white sand uh, beach perfect uh, for swimming but I also wanted to add uh, to this the beaches on the western coast are the most beautiful and uh, they are suitable for swimming and uh, the eastern coast is very rocky uh, you will see that uh, in the rest of the vlog that's also very beautiful and uh, I really recommend uh, to travel there and uh, also do a sightseeing it's uh, better just uh, to admire the waves and uh, the rock formations it's uh, really amazing you will see it uh, later in the vlog Some travel information uh, from Europe, uh, the Amsterdam airport is the only one from which uh, there are flights to Aruba. At least uh, based on my research I didn't find any uh, airlines uh, which have uh, direct flights to Aruba except uh, KLM from Amsterdam. And uh, there are a lot of flights from the US also because uh, as I mentioned a lot of American tourists are coming here. And this is the Eagle Beach, one of the most popular beaches of the world. Aruba is really famous that uh, it has really beautiful white sand uh, beaches the colors are really amazing actually I enjoyed more in the, uh, in the baby beach but uh, this is also very beautiful and you can try all kind of water sports uh, jet ski and uh, also parasailing interesting fact about uh, the Eagle Beach that sometimes uh, they close it between March and uh, June because uh, the leatherback turtles uh, start the nesting period and uh, this is how the locals protect uh, the nature it's uh, really nice
the entry requirements you need just a PCR test uh, vaccination status uh, doesn't matter uh, there's an online uh, embarkation and disembarkation uh, card uh, form which you need to fill out and uh, submit your PCR test uh, before boarding and it's also obligatory to pay $15 uh, for a COVID insurance which is actually not a bad idea because uh, this covers uh, um, the unfortunate situation that you got uh, COVID uh, during your stay and uh, this uh, also covers a treatment of more uh, thousand dollars so actually this uh, 15 dollar it's not a bad uh, thing uh, and you must pay this uh, uh, during this uh, uh, com during the completion of uh, this uh, online uh, form this is a natural sightseeing point of the Eagle Beach uh, the 443 it's uh, very unique in the world uh, it grows out of the sand uh, <laughs> it's a it's a tree on the beach uh, it's really interesting actually uh, you cannot find it anywhere in the world uh, Arubans claim that uh, some scientists tried to uh, plant uh, this tree also in other parts of the world and uh, this action failed so we can find this uh, 443 only in Aruba Another interesting fact is that we shouldn't mistake uh, the 443 with uh, the Divi Divi tree, which is the Watapana tree. Uh, this grows out of the dirt. Uh, this tree can be found everywhere at the island, uh, also in the uh, deserted areas. It uh, grows everywhere in Aruba. And uh, this is the main uh, difference uh, between the Divi Divi or uh, Watapana tree uh, and uh, the 443, which is only at the beach. This is also Watapana tree. After we go more in the north, uh, we find the Palm Beach, also a very popular beach in Aruba. This is the public transportation service of Aruba, Arubus. Sure, you can see uh, most of the uh, eastern coast is uh, covered. This is uh, the most frequented uh, part of the island. This is where a lot of tourists are living, and uh, yeah, with the most uh, <laughs> best uh, beaches, as I already mentioned. And uh, here you can see the Arikok uh, National Park. Uh, I planned uh, a cycling tour uh, to that as you can see there is no public transportation uh, in that area and I'm very happy that I didn't uh, take any taxi yet uh, I was always saving money taking uh, this Arubus uh, the public transportation it's only 2.75 dollars for one ride and it's really worth uh, to travel by uh, bus uh, and now you can see I'm wearing the mask uh, uh, currently inside uh, you need to wear a mask and uh, outside uh, it's uh, not uh, mandatory so these are the current uh, regulations uh, in uh, Aruba regarding to Covid situation This is the main bus terminal of Aruba in Oranjestad If you are a tourist uh, here you can find all buses uh, to all directions and uh, it's uh, really worth to come here because there's also information area and you can ask uh, from which platform in which direction the buses depart so it's very straightforward Aruba doesn't have uh, an industry actually it's only one uh, petrol uh, refinery and uh, uh, they are uh, also uh, making aloe vera because uh, Nothing grows on this island, unfortunately, only cactus and aloe. Uh, so there is uh, no uh, option uh, to uh, grow uh, potatoes or I don't know other vegetables. So that's a big problem uh, because uh, they need to import uh, everything. So if you go to a supermarket, uh, prices will be a little bit higher than uh, usually back home, uh, for example, in Europe. Uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, all kind of fruits and vegetables must be imported and uh, what I also wanted to tell, there's also one uh, brewery. The, uh, Aruba has a local uh, beer uh, called uh, Balashi. Actually, 
Arubans uh, spell it like uh, Balachi. I don't know why, maybe it's uh, like a Papiamento uh, spelling, but uh, this is the local beer. And what was very funny for me and uh, also very surprising that uh, this beer is served in a bottle which is uh, like uh, only a half a beer in uh, Europe. <laughs> it's uh, only um, 220 uh, milliliters and uh, it's a very small bottle. And uh, as I mentioned already, this uh, part of Oranjestad uh, where I'm uh, living, it's a more uh, cheaper place and uh, this uh, small beer costs like uh, two, three dollars. Well, uh, if I compare it with my country, that's also very expensive. And uh, if I think about the quantity, then it's uh, actually I could uh, buy uh, uh, at least uh, two uh, normal uh, beers uh, in my country from uh, two, three uh, dollars. But uh, well, uh, this is uh, how it is in uh, Aruba. And what I wanted to say that uh, in the hotel area, this uh, small beer can reach uh, the price of uh, ten dollars. You can uh, <laughs> you can imagine uh, what a big uh, price difference is. Uh, just uh, living here between the locals in uh, in Oranjestad and uh, living in the hotel area, uh, well, it's a big uh, price difference. This is the building of the Parliament of Aruba. Here we can find the statue of uh, Henry Eman, who was the key figure of uh, the fight for the autonomy. And this is the Wilhelmina Park. It's called after Queen Wilhelmina of uh, Netherlands.
she was ruling uh, the country from uh, 1890 until 1948 and through this she was the longest uh, uh, ruling uh, monarch of uh, the Netherlands Looking at the bird. <laughs> oh, the pelican. pelican, yeah. Ah, is it? Aruba, the California lighthouse. It get uh, its name from a shipwreck in California. And, uh, it's a fake theory that it get, uh, got its name uh, from the Californian ship Californian, which uh, stood uh, ineffectively uh, watching the Titanic uh, sank. So that's not that ship, <laughs> actually. And you can, you can uh, find a lot of Aruban postcards uh, with uh, this uh, lighthouse uh, because, as I mentioned, it's one of the symbols and you can also find a lot of uh, miniatures, a lot of uh, souvenirs uh, with it. It's the same uh, cactus landscape that we see everywhere. And over there you can find the Arashi beach, uh, so it's very close to the lighthouse. You can connect the trip uh, together. Easy climb, it's very narrow. The first chapel of Aruba was established in uh, 1750. What we currently see is the renovated uh, building from uh, 1952. It's called the uh, Alto Vista Chapel. It was uh, designated to convert uh, the local Indians, the Kaketiu Indians, uh, to uh, Christian uh, faith. 
and uh, the work was done by the first uh, priest of Aruba, Domingo Antonio Silvestre Venezuela. The church was uh, called for uh, uh, Mother Saint Mary in the beginning and uh, it had a straw uh, roof. It was uh, built uh, from wood and uh, stones. The renovated building looks totally different. It's a very small chapel. used in the 19th century for uh, smelting uh, gold. Actually we cannot go any closer because uh, the rocks are falling down and well in fact it's in really good shape uh, if you consider that it's more than 200 years uh, old. The Bushiribana gold mill ruins. Caribbean tropical music is everywhere. <laughs> Some sightseeing attractions are uh, not easy to reach and uh, also uh, very expensive uh, by taxi. So I was thinking to rent a bike and uh, actually this is the way how I will discover these places. I'm really excited about it. Well, I hope it will be not uh, big traffic because, uh, well, it could be a little bit uh, dangerous. I hope it will be fine. Uh, so it was only 20 bucks, uh, 20 dollars uh, to rent this bike for a day. And uh, uh, well, uh, I hope that it will be uh, very nice and uh, yeah, <laughs> let's get started.
is the Arikok National Park. There you can see the Aruban flag. The landscape is really interesting, I never saw such a thing. I already arrived to the first uh, sightseeing point of this uh, cycling trip. This is the Boca Prince. It's uh, really amazing. As you can imagine, uh, swimming is forbidden here. <laughs> the waves are really tough. It's absolutely outstanding, spectacular. Amazing view. Actually, they say that uh, the waves uh, formed uh, this uh, bay. Well, it's not an easy cycling trip, I must say, uh, I must admit, <laughs> it's uh, up, ups and downs, so it's um, not, uh, not easy. You need to climb uh, some hills and then... It's a really bumpy ride.
need to watch my step here. It's uh, <laughs> Also, the waves uh, carved uh, all these holes. Boca Prince. The next sightseeing attraction is the Fountain Cave, uh, which is uh, really amazing because there are some uh, drawings which are 1000 years old, made by uh, Caquetillo Indians. These Indians were living in Venezuela and uh, as I already mentioned, Venezuela is uh, not so far from here, it's like uh, 20 minutes by boat, uh, 29 uh, kilometers uh, far from here. So, um, actually scientists say that uh, more million years ago, uh, uh, the sea carved out uh, this uh, limestone uh, uh, cave. As you can see, now the horizon over there is the sea and uh, uh, here is the cave. And uh, um, the water was uh, at this uh, level, uh, as uh, Aruba was a uh, tinier, tinier island. Um, and uh, this is how this cave uh, was uh, formed. Okay, so let's go inside and uh, check out uh, these uh, beautiful uh, drawings uh, made by the Indians. It was very warm uh, in this uh, cave, so the Indians used uh, the cave only for uh, ceremonies. And uh, here in front of us we can see a chamber.
these are the drawings We can visit only the entrance of this cave because uh, uh, down deep inside uh, there are some uh, bats uh, living. <laughs> There are some other more drawings. Our next stop is the Kwadikiri cave. This is also a limestone uh, cave. Local legend says that uh, the daughter of uh, a Kakatiyo Indian chief called uh, Kwadikiri uh, fa fell in love uh, with a white guy, uh, probably from uh, Europe. And uh, of course, uh, the Indian chief uh, disagreed with this uh, love and uh, uh, he didn't allow uh, their relationship. Because of that, uh, he locked in his uh, daughter here in this cave and uh, after that uh, this cave was uh, named uh, after her. This is why it's called uh, Kwadikiri uh, cave, but this is only a legend. Keep silence because a lot of pets are living here. Uh, 
And exactly this is why uh, this uh, cave is uh, very spectacular and amazing because uh, it has a natural light and uh, inside uh, you can see like a lighted uh, chamber. This is the second chamber with natural light. <laughs> It's extremely hot uh, inside of the cave. I swear it, uh, it is much more exhausting rather than uh, on the bike. Um, literally sweating. One travel advice if you choose uh, to cycle through this park like me, uh, just bring a small bag uh, with you with uh, water or something because it's really hot outside uh, actually every time in the every time of the year in Aruba and um, there is no place, uh, no market uh, where you can buy some water except at the entrance of the park where I uh, bought one but uh, since then uh, I was really sweating and it was a, a really hard uh, cycling uh, path. But I was uh, very lucky that um, I spoke with a ranger, with the ranger of the park, and uh, he gave me some water. Yeah, what are these rangers are doing? They are keep the safety in the park and uh, they pay attention what uh, the tourists do. So, yeah, this is mainly their task. Well, uh, after this uh, hydration uh, <laughs> uh, stop, let's go further. This is Dos Playa, another very nice uh, bay. Not for swimming, but uh, it's a beautiful view. The waves are really big, really high. It's very similar to Boca Prince.
but the beach is really nice, uh, white sand, very soft. Here you can see the road uh, leading to Dos Playa and uh, usually the tourists just uh, uh, get to the first uh, beach. Dos Playa means in Spanish uh, two beaches and uh, this is why this place is called uh, so. Actually you need to walk like uh, 500 meters uh, and uh, climb a rock to get uh, to this uh, second beach. And uh, actually this is more amazing, I will show you why. First it looks like very similar, but uh, these rocks are really special. Ah, yes. <laughs> Some natural shower. It's really amazing. Absolutely spectacular view. Oh my god. <laughs> I could just sit here a day and uh, watch the waves, it's really amazing. Absolutely outstanding.
And this is Konchi, a natural uh, swimming pool, as you can see. The rocks uh, formed uh, this uh, deeper uh, lake, actually. <laughs> Looks like a lake. Um, this swimming pool is very popular uh, among the tourists and uh, also a lot of fish there, so snorkeling is also a very good uh, option. So it's uh, really nice. So I really got exhausted in the end because, uh, well, I mentioned that it's a bumpy ride. After that I turned uh, to Konchi, uh, to that uh, natural swimming pool, it went really crazy because the hills were like uh, 30, uh, between 30, 40 degrees uh, uh, high. So it was really a lot to climb and uh, I couldn't uh, uh, manage to do it after like uh, three or four times because it was every time up and down up and down so it was really crazy but i don't regret it it was a really amazing view i really enjoyed it and uh, i hope uh, that you also we will go to a shipwreck uh, called uh, antilla it was uh, a cargo ship of the nazi germany it was uh, built in 1939 i had uh, the goal to uh, make the trading uh, between the caribbean and uh, germany its maiden voyage uh, started on the 15th uh, July of uh, 1939 and uh, the destination was uh, Galveston in Texas. It was supposed to carry 3000 tons of uh, sulfur uh, to Germany. Well, you can imagine this uh, sulfur was not uh, designated for some uh, firecrackers of the new year. Um, well, uh, the ship had some problems and actually stopped uh, at Curaçao, but uh, these uh, problems were fixed and uh, they eventually reached uh, the destination Galveston in uh, Texas. After they loaded the 3000 tons of uh, sulfur, uh, they wanted uh, to return uh, to Germany and first wanted to stop at uh, Cartagena for uh, some uh, refuel. And uh, actually they get a coded message uh, from the home uh, country, from uh, Germany, which was Esberger. This uh, code uh, word meant uh, for the captain uh, Ferdinand Schmidt that uh, they uh, need to come back immediately to Germany and uh, they must uh, fake uh, their names. They need to hide uh, that uh, they are a German ship and uh, must return as soon as possible to Germany. So. Actually, this was already a preparation for the Second World War by uh, Germany. And um, what happened after, on the 28th uh, August of uh, 1939, they get also another uh, coded message. If they cannot achieve uh, Germany in uh, four days, they cannot get back uh, home uh, so soon. They need to find a neutral uh, port, like uh, where there are no uh, enemies of uh, Germany. Captain uh, Schmidt tried uh, to uh, dock at uh, Wilhelmstadt uh, harbor in uh, Curaçao but he got a message that uh, that harbor is already full with uh, German ships so there's no place for for his uh, ship so actually uh, he 
decided to uh, come here to Aruba and uh, they were staying here uh, for uh, more uh, months. On the 1st uh, September of uh, 1939 Germany invaded uh, Poland and uh, this was the beginning of the Second uh, World War. So of course uh, Netherlands was watching carefully uh, what these German ships are doing after uh, this invasion began until Antilla was uh, waiting uh, here uh, for months and actually they uh, offloaded uh, their cargo the 3000 tons of sulfur here in San Nicolas uh, in Aruba. On the 12th uh, April of 1940 Germany invaded also Denmark and uh, Norway so Netherlands uh, was uh, already very worried that uh, they will be the next, uh, they will be also uh, invaded uh, soon and uh, they ordered that uh, the German uh, ship uh, Antilla should be uh, under a lockdown so the local authorities who are uh, uh, here in the colony of uh, Aruba they uh, closed uh, the German ship and uh, it was uh, no way out uh, for the crew. Germany actually invaded also uh, Netherlands on the uh, 10th May of uh, 1940 and uh, on the same day the Dutch government uh, tried to put some pressure on the Germans and uh, they ordered that uh, the local Dutch authorities uh, here in the Caribbean region should attack all uh, German ships. So uh, actually the Germans uh, they didn't uh, care about this it was in fact uh, no pressure about it so they didn't uh, retrieve uh, their armies in the mainland of uh, Europe uh, they continued uh, the invasion uh, of uh, Netherlands. So uh, what happened uh, the Dutch uh, uh, authorities uh, which were here in Aruba first uh, asked the captain if uh, he would lower the gangway so it would be uh, peaceful but uh, Ferdinand Schmidt the captain of this uh, German ship uh, Antilla uh, refused it so the Dutch uh, captain actually was afraid that uh, it would be armed resistance and uh, it uh, would be little bit uh, fight uh, between the Dutch and the Germans so he delayed uh, the attack uh, to think about it uh, what to do. So during this uh, delay the German crew decided uh, to scuttle uh, the ship they didn't want it to hand it over to the Dutch so what happened one crewman climbed uh, down uh, to, uh, to the engine room and uh, scuttled the ship opened uh, the ship's uh, sea cocks and the water started to, to flew in and uh, this guy then escaped uh, through the funnel he climbed out the, through the funnel because he locked the, the engine room uh, from uh, inside this was of course with the purpose if, they, if the Dutch uh, board the ship they couldn't uh, stop this uh, sinking this actually happened uh, some hours later the Dutch captain ordered uh, that uh, they should board the ship it was no resistance actually these Germans were not soldiers they were just uh, refusing to hand it over the ship the ship uh, was uh, sinking the Dutch uh, couldn't take control of it so the Dutch uh, captured uh, the German crew and uh, they forced them to build uh, houses in Curaçao uh, this was like uh, a camp uh, for all uh, prisoners and uh, they were then kept uh, there in uh, Curaçao after that this was also an agreement uh, with the British uh, that they should be transported to another uh, jail which was in uh, Jamaica so they didn't uh, stay uh, in Curaçao for all the time. In 1953 it was a big uh, tropical storm which broke the shipwreck in uh, two. It was a uh, heavy damage and there is a misconception that uh, the crew of, uh, of the German cargo ship uh, Antilla not just uh, wanted uh, to uh, sink uh, the ship but they also uh, heated the boilers so uh, it was uh, an explosion and uh, that was uh, which broke uh, the ship in uh, in two but this is not true and actually uh, there were also some research the Dutch uh, were uh, diving uh, to this uh, ship which is actually not very deep in the sea so um, they found uh, the shipwreck uh, intact so it uh, was uh, actually uh, damaged only later uh, 13 years later by this uh, heavy storm Another uh, misconception is that uh, this was not a cargo ship, it was a German U-boat. Uh, well, that's also not true because, um, as I said, uh, this uh, cargo ship started its um, 
its uh, first uh, trip, its maiden voyage to uh, to Texas uh, on the 15th of July of uh, 1939, and the World War didn't start yet. And another misconception is that uh, this uh, ship was part of the Operation Neuland. Operation Neuland was a strategy that uh, Germany also wanted to attack the colonies of uh, the uh, British and of the Dutch. So that's why they sent some U-boats uh, uh, and uh, some uh, submarines uh, to this uh, territory of the Caribbean to attack uh, the Allied forces also here. But uh, this uh, strategical uh, step of the Nazi Germany uh, took place between uh, February and March of uh, 1942 and uh, Antilla was uh, scuttled uh, since longer time until uh, then. So this was uh, the story about uh, the shipwreck of Antilla. I hope uh, that you found it very interesting. But now let's get started with this amazing adventure. We will take a catamaran uh, cruise and uh, uh, we will do a snorkeling uh, around uh, this uh, very amazing uh, shipwreck. I hope that uh, the recordings uh, will be uh, good enough. So yeah, let's get started. But if you have a scuba diving license, it is also possible to uh, make a tour by scuba diving and get it really close to this uh, wreck. I think that's the most amazing uh, stuff. I was also always dreaming about something like this, but I don't have a driving license. I would need some uh, uh, training before that and I, well, well this time uh, <laughs> It will uh, not. Uh, uh, it can be accomplished, but uh, yeah, let's hope that I will learn also this uh, uh, sometime in the future. So uh, this is uh, what I wanted to tell you: some more information that also scuba diving it's possible on uh, that place. Could you guys please take off your shoes, slippers, anything on your feet at all? Thank you. This looks very really interesting. I never saw such a thing. Actually, I never uh, had a cruising trip with a catamaran like this. So it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs>
Sparrow. Cruising was uh, Boca Catalina. This is uh, where I am currently. Uh, it means uh, Catalina Bay. It's a very popular uh, uh, tourist uh, point because uh, uh, people are snorkeling usually. I hope that you enjoy these uh, underwater uh, recordings. Actually, I swam uh, from the catamaran uh, to, to the beach because, uh, uh, well, I thought I can make uh, this uh, recording uh, better to show you uh, Boca Catalina. It's uh, really, really beautiful. It's uh, amazing. Well, what I didn't know that uh, uh, this uh, uh, catamaran cruising trip also has open bar, uh, all you can drink, <laughs> and they also have uh, vodka and the rum. Uh, a lot of American tourists are drinking already, but for me, I think it's a little bit early. Uh, we started at 9:30 a.m. and uh, well, <laughs> that's uh, a really party vibe on the ship uh, currently. As you can see, even though I tried my best, I got uh, sunburn. Well, actually, I used the uh, sun cream, but this weather is uh, really, really tough. Uh, like, uh, very, very hot and uh, it's burning. It's like burning hell. It's just uh, 26, uh, 27 uh, Celsius degrees, but uh, it's always uh, 
um, really like uh, I don't know it feels like uh, 50 or <laughs> it's uh, really crazy actually I got sunburn uh, during my cycling trip because that time I was uh, sweating a lot and I think uh, that uh, dissolved uh, the cream which I used and I also didn't have the chance to use the sun cream a lot of times because uh, well I didn't have any luggage on the bicycle so it was no chance for me to also carry my cream and uh, put it on many times but for now uh, until now I'm okay so it's not that bad but I'm wondering when I was uh, walking in Dubai in uh, 42 degrees and uh, it was uh, uh, well uh, really really hot it was like in a sauna but uh, I didn't get any sunburn, it's uh, very interesting. Well, probably because that has another climate, uh, desert uh, climate, and uh, this is a uh, uh, tropical uh, climate, so that uh, could be the difference. Of course, I was sweating uh, in that uh, 42 degrees, but uh, I didn't get any uh, sunburn. And this sunburn is definitely not so bad like in the Maldives. That time I was still uh, making vlogs with my phone and uh, it was uh, not a big uh, quality and also only Hungarian but it has English subtitle so I will link it for you if you want to uh, watch it um, well it has a lot of useful uh, travel information how to travel uh, cheap uh, to Maldives and uh, where to stay if you're a budget traveler like me so I think it's worth to watch the vlog even though if it's uh, in Hungarian with uh, English subtitle Aruba has no rivers and uh, no fountains uh, no springs so because of that uh, it is a little bit uh, complicated to get uh, to produce the drinking water so because of that if you go to uh, to supermarket you will find uh, like uh, 1.5 liter uh, drinking water for uh, two dollars which is uh, well just for water it's a little bit uh, expensive if I compare to with to my country from two dollars I can get uh, like uh, four big bottles two liter uh, bottles of uh, water but uh, of course you cannot compare uh, that with uh, such an exotic country so yeah that's also an interesting information about uh, Aruba another interesting fact about Aruba that uh, most of the hotels don't have a hot shower and uh, I saw a lot of comments on uh, booking and uh, on other websites where you can book hotels that uh, they were complaining about this well uh, the hotel owners uh, usually replied that uh, it's no need because uh, Aruba is always hot so and I can confirm that uh, when I took shower it was uh, well not so hot like at home uh, as I like but I also don't need after this very tropical weather and uh, well uh, after this uh, uh, sunburn not really uh, needed to have such a hot shower so I think it's completely fine this is the Cassibari rock formation uh, formed uh, naturally and uh, it's really mysterious how these uh, got in this shape and uh, well it could be compared with the Stonehenge in a way but uh, well it's a really interesting uh, natural sightseeing point of Aruba and we can also climb to the top for a good uh, view
landscape full of cactus <laughs> just as we got used to it In front of us we can see Hoiberg which is 165 meters high uh, volcanic uh, formation and uh, it is like uh, located in the center of the island and can be seen uh, literally from everywhere. The Dutch word uh, Hoiberg uh, uh, translates into haystack uh, in English as the landform is said to resemble a stack of uh, hay. So many have uh, remarked about the panoramic views uh, obtained atop uh, Hoiberg but it's recommended only for uh, people who are in good shape actually because uh, it's uh, 662 steps uh, which lead uh, to the top but it's really worth because on uh, clear uh, sunny days you can uh, even see Venezuela from the top. Now we will climb the Hoiberg, uh, it will be really interesting. Uh, behind me you can see the staircase, it's uh, 662 uh, steps, uh, stairs, so it will be really uh, hard uh, to do it, but I think uh, the panorama will be worth uh, to do it, so yeah, let's get started. Amazing view from the top of the hill. If you walk to the other side of the hill, uh, we can uh, see Venezuela, but not now because it's uh, too cloudy. It's over there. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's only 29 kilometers uh, from Aruba, so there are actually also uh, boats. Uh, between the two countries but uh, not now because uh, because of the covid it's uh, closed and uh, venezuelans are not allowed uh, to come to aruba the view is still amazing even though we cannot see venezuela now this is the io rock formation it's uh, similar to Casibari, so formed in a natural way Actually, some tourists uh, skip this attraction because uh, they say it's just a bunch of rocks. <laughs> uh, that's also the reason why on TripAdvisor doesn't have a big uh, uh, rating. But in my opinion, it's also good to check uh, uh, natural sightseeing attractions like this. So it's uh, very interesting uh, how these rocks uh, formed uh, like this and uh, it's uh, nice to climb uh, uh, between them.
very interesting how these huge rocks uh, got here. That's why some uh, scientists and tourists say it's, it's, it's a mysterious uh, place. So this was the travel film about Aruba, I hope uh, that you enjoy it and if that's so please subscribe to my channel and it's very important to click on the bell icon because this is how you get uh, notifications about uh, the new contents and this is really important because I still have some uh, really amazing uh, travel plans and uh, yeah I will keep you posted about uh, uh, these and um, I also wanted to say that uh, I stayed five days in Aruba and uh, well it was uh, very joyful it was really amazing and I really loved it uh, but but uh, if you can stay longer, uh, of course, uh, you can do uh, um, uh, much more uh, sightseeing. But in my opinion, five days are enough. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, in this very long uh, travel film, travel vlog, uh, I could uh, um, cover all the main uh, sightseeing attractions and, uh, well, everything uh, what I like uh, personally. But there are also some other uh, points uh, which are very interesting. Uh, for example, if you like animals, you can go to the ostrich uh, farm or, or uh, also to the uh, donkey uh, sanctuary or there's also a butterfly farm uh, if, you, if you like. So so there are still other uh, uh, points and of course uh, you can just uh, stay at the beach and uh, uh, chill and uh, there are a lot of uh, cruises and uh, tourist activities so uh, some uh, American tourists uh, uh, which I met uh, told me that they were staying like uh, two weeks so <laughs> I think you can never get bored uh, in Aruba so that was everything uh, about uh, uh, this, uh, this time about uh, Aruba I hope that you enjoyed it have a nice day and uh, goodbye